Hey everybody, how's it going? So this video is a little bit overdue. This plugin was new last spring and it's just been kind of on my to-do list for quite some time. It's by one of my favorite plugin developers, which is Aurora DSP. Uh, those guys made the Mammoth Bass Amp Sim there last year. And I've been using that an awful lot on a lot of my records over the last year or two. A lot of you guys have been saying, hey, what's with that great bass tone? What's with that great bass tone? Yeah, it's the Aurora stuff. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, what's it sound like on guitar? What's this Rhino plugin sound like? This is what it looks like. What's it sound like? Check this out. Uh, oh yeah, did I mention that you can get this plugin for only 40 bucks? Oh, the plot thickens. Let's get into it. All right, so as I stated, uh, I'm a little overdue with this plugin. And yeah, this really is kind of like the holy crap, I can't believe they stuffed so many features into this thing for only 40 bucks. This is just fucking bananas. Uh, we've got our input here. We can set our input level. We got a high pass filter, gate, uh, four different kinds of drive with some pedals and stuff, an EQ section, effects, flanger, chorus, phaser. Delay, reverb, impulse responses, and then you've got um, this output control, this tight control, and a limiter, and your output volume as well. And the crazy thing is, all of these things expand. You can you can just load them up and get into like the real nitty gritty controls if you want to do that. Uh, but I gotta say, I think this thing sounds absolutely amazing just right out of the box. <laughs> That is just super cool. Oh yeah, and gate action. That's really nice too. All you gent kids are really gonna dig that. Let's see if we can make that a little tighter. Can we can we do that more? Let's go the other way. Uh do we, how many, what kind of controls do we get here? Look at this. So if we, we pull this back, oh yeah, you got all your attack release controls, all that kind of stuff. Even the slope control. It might be just a little bit tight. We'll pull that back a couple dBs and go again. Yeah, that's super tight. That's really cool. Once again, just the fact that you can expand that, kind of adjust all the, all the uh, finer settings, that's great. Uh, let's take a look at the preamp section on this real quick. Uh, this gets a little bit confusing. So we've got our four different amp heads here. This isn't clearly marked, and that's my one minor gripe so far, is the preamps are here. we got red, yellow, blue, and purple. I'm partially colorblind. It looks like purple. I could be completely wrong. Taking a wild guess. That one's definitely blue, though, and uh, I know this one is after modeled after some kind of Mesa. I think the uh, the blue one's a Cornford. I could be wrong. Um, if you go through the manual, uh, it lays it all out for you. What is what? But we've also got got a screamer, uh, the brute thing. I think that's more for genty shit. We've got a fuzz and the push. That's uh, kind of a compressor kind of thing. I'm just set up here and on the on the on the blue channel. <laughs> That's that's just great, right out, right out of the gate there. I gotta say, I, I am using custom IR, and I'm gonna show you guys what that's all about in a minute here. But just to take you through the different preamps here, if we we uh, start out, I think over here on the on the red, that uh, that's pretty clean. Oh, there's a bright knob, bright switch. We can turn up the drive a little bit. We get a little. Let me throw a little fuzz on that. Let's see what we get here. Ooh, turn the bright off. Let's see what we get now. Ooh, that's ugly. It's just so many freaking controls here. Throw a bright on there, throw a bright on here. See what we get. That's grimy as hell. That's fun. Throw a little scream in front of it. Pick it out like so.
Cool. All right, great. That, that's wonderful. Now let's go to the yellow one here, see what we get. No, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, there's even a boost here too. Wow. Pretty diverse amount of sounds here. Back on the blue. That's definitely my favorite. Uh, yeah, headroom as well. That's just luscious. That's really cool. Oh, we can throw a high pass on. And we can throw a high pass on here as well. Get that, uh, get that low end under control. Oh, we can do a low pass, maybe take out about 12 kilohertz or so. Oh, I'm saving that. That works out quite well. Just want to take a bit of the top end zing off, but leave a little bit there as well. Oh, we can, look at that. That is so cool. That little three band EQ there is just absolutely fantastic. Holy smokes. These guys really thought of everything with this plugin. Just so, just so many things to play with here. That is so freaking cool. Um, apparently, the Brute is for kind of cleaning up genty kind of stuff. I don't know how much I really need it here. Uh, let's try it out, see what it does anyway. Turn off the screen, put the Brute in. I don't know, that doesn't sound like it's cleaning up the genty stuff. It's a little fatter sounding. That's not bad, though. Uh, let's... Yeah, I'm not a gent kid at all, but uh, that's kind of fun. I, honestly, I like the screamer sound better. Though. That sounds kind of thin by comparison. Now. Okay, let me go back to my preset. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so we get that, and then uh, the yellow drive, or the purple drive. Let's hear that. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Oh yeah, by the way, there's a free download. There's like a trial period. So if you want to check this out uh, without spending any cash, you can totally go get your hands on it. Roy DSP, link's in the description below. Definitely recommend checking this one out because uh, did I mention it's only 40 bucks for the full version? I mean, that's insane. We get in here, you know, there there is like an EQ thing here. <laughs> You can, you know, if you're not happy with the tones here, you can tweak it out. Now, I have no idea what this EQ matching thing is. I tried messing around with this earlier and I really didn't have much luck. So that's uh, that's the EQ section. Again, I'm not sure about the match thing. Uh, that definitely probably warrants a little bit more attention being paid to it. But honestly, I'm really happy with the results I'm getting just kind of out of the box here and then messing around with some IRs. And this thing's got a really amazing IR section. So you can mix and match your IRs and you got a little plus button here where you can drag and drop your own IRs as well. And as you can see, I've got this one in here. And um, once again, you get controls of your presence, resonance. I don't know what the hot control is. Let's see what that does. Okay. That's a little bit of snow, too. Presence, resonance, like you'd hear on a power amp. Real 
real easy to abuse those controls. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. Take it real, real simple. That I think the hot control is kind of like the tube bias. <laughs> Yeah, that is cool. That is all kinds of cool. I really like the the fact that you can just put, mix and match and blend and all that kind of stuff. Okay, just a quick look at the effects here. Uh, we've got modulation controls, and then you expand it. That's cool. Chorus. Again, you can you can tweak that out till your heart's content. Flanger. That's a little fast. That's cool. And uh, the phaser, I was messing around with this earlier. That's kind of fun as well. Um, I kind of like the chorus, actually. And what else I've had going on in this all this whole time is just a tiny bit of reverb going on. I can bring the mix up here just a little bit and show you guys. It's like, this is what's actually happening. And uh, of course, I don't want to sound like I'm in a tin can. I want to hear the guitar, but I just want to give it a little bit of space, a little bit of depth. You know, just a little bit of that, a bit of that breathy sound. You know, want to put it in a space. That's super cool. And of course you got two types of delay as well. And yep, again, the fact that it's just here and you can just set it up and play with it directly right in the plugin. You don't have to go external to any other plugins. It's great. Really liking the tone this thing has given me though. And of course on the back end, we've got tight and limit. As you can see on the limiter here, I've got it going at four dBs just to kind of smooth things out a bit. That's freaking cool. Bring it up a little more. Probably it's going to. Yep, that's freaking cool. So that's going to keep things under control quite nicely. Let's see what the tight control is doing, though. Oh, let's turn it on. That might help. Here we go. That's going to keep your palm mutes under control. That's the old C4 trick built right in there. That's not bad as well. That's pretty cool. I kind of like it off, though. Wow, that really does clean things up. Holy crap. Cool. All right. Well, that's uh, that's a brief overview of the controls. Of course, the big question is, how good does it sound in a mix? Let's roll it. Let me show you what it can do.
so that is the Aurora DSP Rhino. Got to say, as far as plugins go, amp sims and whatnot, this thing's about as full featured as it comes. The fact you've got four different amp stacks plus a whole suite of effects, IR loader, gate, ah, compressor, everything you kind of need in an amp sim all built right into the entire plugin is absolutely phenomenal. The fact it's only $40 is kind of criminal, to be honest with you. Uh, they could probably get away with selling this for $150, and I'd still pay for it because I really do think it is that good. But don't take my word for it. Go download it. Check it out for yourself. See how well it works in your own studio with your own projects. Follow the link in the description below. Go check it out. And uh, until next time, let's make some great music together. Music.